starting to become more and more apparent and it just kept like wiggling and doing this kind of s-curve thing and mm -hmm. it's because like corner weighting would take effect at this part of the pass but rear steer would be this part of effect and then bump steer would take this part of effect right. like all these things would make it act differently going down the surface and then once we figured out the key element that was making the biggest problem it seems like it's been pretty case. straight lately now that you mentioned that like yeah ever since june we figured it out late last May. year was pretty bad yeah so, like, we figured it out late may this year and then we, we had our first proving ground was Warren Woods' first thing of this year. And we hit that race, and it was just, boom, it was on target. That's awesome. So. Yeah, because that was our agreement. He wasn't allowed to go back to Brown County until he got the car to start going straight. Yeah. I, I mean, the housing can't. itself was physically bent. Yeah, yeah, the tubes are bent in relation to the four-link brackets, so just in that small run. So you measure your brackets. Yeah, so normally I measure my brackets yeah. in the four-link bars, you know, because that all should be true and square. And it wasn't mm -hmm. so um when we wrecked in september we had to refront out the car we were able i was able to square everything to the four link brackets i knew those were good yeah and then once i got the front end square then we, i was like man I was like we need to put on a rack and just see if the rear end square is the front like we haven't ever tested this and checked it and i was like it's off five eighths of an inch mm -hmm. that'll like, do it i'm like that's a problem we so we found that in my nova once too and the bad thing about it is is nothing is square in the car like yeah that's the biggest thing it's like what do you go to yeah what do you go off of so we started we we built the whole car around the four link brackets so once we like i'm like these are 100 percent where i want to center everything off like we just been married to that and then we've just been squaring everything off those two points and then once we did that the triangle just gets bigger and bigger yeah then we have more and more square stuff to go with for awesome. you is like we're in the woods the most nervous you get watching him race it was yeah. It probably was, but that was only because that was one of the first times I stayed home after I had Logan. Like, we went together, didn't we? The first one. Yeah. And it was well, sketchy, think... and you and Eric went back, and you spun out, yeah. and I watched it on the live feed. Oh, and, gosh. of course, in the live feed, everyone makes it sound so much worse. Oh, so yeah. people are saying that he people rolled running. and, you know, all this stuff. And so I actually uh, I called Jasper Graham, and I'm like, what happened? You know, I'm at home with the baby. What's going on? He's like, oh, no, he just, you know, he's in the mud. Because at the it's time, fine. he was one of the only guys that had service there. Yeah, because the service yeah. used to be so bad. Yeah. That's how I met Jasper. Yeah. yeah. And then he drove it to the car wash and it was fine. But yeah, that was, that was like my breaking point. And then that was when I think Brown County was one of the ones I was like, eh. Yeah. Well, I was but it's gotten better. I was better. from going back to my own career. Better. 
it's gotten so much better. Like, and that's what I even tell people that ask us about it. I'm like, I mean, it's apples to oranges compared to what it used to be. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd send them down it right now, and I wouldn't. I mean, I think they're actually adding even more lighting next year too, so you can see that would be better. good. I've seen that. So yeah, that place is pretty scary sometimes. But oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we were in the grass. I think every pass the last time we were out there with the blower. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, and that was pretty nerve wracking. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> flying. <laughs> just a bit not as fast as Tommy I mean Tommy was, he was Tommy a, made it to the semi yeah he was a top <laughs> contender I had my draggy I don't want nobody to see what I was going sheesh I'd scare anything anyway. anything can happen though exactly yeah anything I showed him mine yeah I mean he had a window of chance he could have gotten there <laughs> I needed to put banana peels in the and send Sasquatch to so is that we are one of your favorite rolling, places. Okay, cool. Is that one of your favorite places to race? What's your favorite place, favorite track, and then what's your favorite street? I used to really love Salisaw, just because of how difficult it was. That place shut down, didn't it? Mm -hmm. That shut down that a year and a half Oklahoma. ago. Oklahoma. Yeah, it's uh, just west of. God, what city is that? I can't remember. But yeah, it's on. It's like right by Oklahoma or right by Arkansas, on the edge of that border there. I and mean, to be in Oklahoma. Is that really? Where they did the ten five till I die? Yeah. 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 So that was awesome. And we went to the finals. Uh, let's see, they did three of those events, and we won two. We went to the finals in all three. That's where he proposed. Yeah. Oh, oh beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, supposedly, rumor is, is someone bought it. Yeah, I thought is what I heard. It. So they're trying to get it back up and going. That's but awesome. it's a really cool place. There's That's a lot a of little tracks opening back up. I seen one in West Virginia just reopen and they're wanting to do some no prep next year until they get enough money to get a timing system. That Kentucky place we went to a couple months ago was pretty neat too. The airstrip? Yeah. He they, I think they that have two fun. or three dates already set yeah. for yep. next year. Three of them. Uh but I mean favor right now, I mean it really depends. It depends what kind of racing I want to do. Um Challenging, Salisaw's tough. That'll, mm -hmm. God, I'll throw any seasoned no prep guy for a loop. Um, Is that like a front side? Or? It's a tree side, but good luck going fours. It's yeah. that, and on a 29.5. Bumpy or just not a lot It of is rubber? bumpy, and when they drag it, the, the asphalt was so porous that you get these ridges for all the dragging of the rubber, so you lose contact patch on the tire. So like it was a struggle to be able to go in the fours and get it out of the one like to get into the 150s mm. it was like a goal for us just to get into those zones and it was tough um you love a challenge don't you oh yeah <laughs> yeah because i know if i'm working really really hard everybody else is working really hard too yeah and if that's the case i feel like i got an edge yeah so because i feel like we can get a handle on it pretty fast do you like going to the really slow surfaces like the the rocking hams and stuff like that not really it's get, not really fun, is it? No, not when you have as much money as we have in the car, like the Nova. Right. Like the S10 makes sense, you know. You do a an S, you do a build like that, like Elvira, and you know, I mean, you got forty to seventy grand in it, depending on what kind of quality parts you put in there, and that's the only surface it's going to be competitive on. You know, when you have a car that you've been putting money into for, you know, a decade, or in my yeah. case, almost, I mean, twenty one years now, and uh, you want to go out there and go six O's. I mean, it just, it's it not does. that fun. It, it, it's hard to justify. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, we're going to try some of that. We did some of that with the blower so far. And I really was surprised how fast it went like that. And we're going to try some more of that. Yeah, you um, did the backside over there in Missouri. I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ozark. Ozark. Yeah, yeah, we did big tire, small tire, same night. And, and switching. Daily. Yeah, daily, daily with uh, Elvira. Yeah. And on... I'm trying. <laughs> and on, I have to have a reset every now and then, okay? <laughs> Can't touch the table. Um, <laughs> but we were actually switching tires back and forth for the Ozark race. And I've been using the same big tire since we filmed in Las Vegas. Three years ago. Two, two and a half, three years ago yeah, now. Yeah, that was when Logan was like four months and old. And like they still so. have enough life to them that they just keep going. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, we took both of those there. And I was just surprised how fast we were able to go on the 28s there. And it's not even on the newer 28 that everybody's trying to use, that DO5. And we're just on an old tried and true CO7. And it was moving. You like power management with the Pro Charger a lot better than the Turbo? It's cake. It Simpler. is cake. Yeah. It's probably more consistent. Yeah. We are going to put the twins back on it, though. So I think I want to try to get those in our shot. Hmm. 
I'm sure there's a reason. <laughs> no. No, we're sticking with the turbo. He's blower just talking with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny because there's a lot of people out there that watch what you guys do. Obviously, right. you know that. And they base that off of what their build is this yeah. winter. Yeah, and I mean the turbo. It stuff, is funny to throw people off. I feel like Joey still does that a lot. He's, he's been he's really with people good. Lately. Yeah, he's really and good. I, I, mean, at it I too, I've got no idea what he's going to do. Yeah, and I don't know if he's going to jump to a different power adder or if he's just going to maintain. Yeah, I mean what he has works really well, and he's been staying in a pretty tight niche of what he wants to run the car. It seems like, and he's got to figure it out for that. But for the flexibility that we wanted. And we just need to be brutally fast at all these tracks. I mean, there's a lot of guys in the South. They're just, they're tough to beat because that's all they do is the tree side stuff. And I did the blower try to even the playing field. And it's, it's leveled it out. Really good to the 330 quick, huh? Uh, crazy fast. So you said the South is faster. I, I was going to ask you, so what part of the country do you feel is the most competitive where you go race and like it's the hardest to go and win a race? Like where do you think is the area of the country that's the fastest right now? What surface? Uh, I'd say front sides. Tree side stuff? Tree side stuff, you've got key players. you got like Cantu, you got Brent Self, Adam Plunkett when his car is together. Um, shoot, even Todd Varney. Spears. Yeah, Todd Spears. Once he gets that car figured out. Everyone's screwed. And I don't feel like Todd's new car is where Wall Street was, mm -hmm. but it's still a new car. And he's had some build challenges, especially after his rebuild on it. After so, I mean, just a couple of passes and he had to go through it again. Have you guys gotten to race Frankenstein yet? I know you guys were oh, going to yeah, race at... Four and O. Oh. oh, you beat him four times? We've only been down the track twice with him. Oh. And then twice... Um, I know we didn't woods, get down he, the track. He broke or something. And yeah, then the he, one before that, he about ate the wall. Yeah, he zipped the tire right off the bat. It was like there was a fluid on the lane or... like. It was it was an odd circumstance. I don't know what exactly happened, but he tried to go forward and the car went I think hard left. Yeah, it yeah. went hard left. But yeah, we've raced him and we had an awesome race with him at the Purge at Wagler mm -hmm. um, this year, one of Jeff Thomas's other races, and I think it was semifinal pass. No, I remember semifinal or final, and it was <laughs> it was a good race. Mm -hmm. It was Pretty awesome, fast, man. Mm -hmm. I feel put like him on a really good track that he can get after it mile an hour wise and yeah. He really surprised me at the Onondaga race, or Onondaga. It's a track in Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, him and Joey raced off the trailer. Of course, Joey's been there, and he's got data. And right. He's won there. And I bet on I Joey. Lost, I lost money. I lost 100 bucks. <laughs> but yeah. I was like, man, there's no way that they're going to get that car down next to somebody that, you know, Joey. He's way more experienced at that track. And, I mean, he got it done. I was like, wow, I'm not, I'm not going to. It's a testament to how good that car is. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. But I mean, you know, Joey and Preston's, I mean, they all they all have a lot of data on a lot of different surfaces. So, I mean, maybe the Preston just wanted it more. Yeah. And Joey may have played it a little bit conservative on that one. So I don't know what he ran on that. But I mean, I know the competitiveness in the Preston's, I mean, they're going to swing for everything. I mean, if, you're, mm -hmm. if they're racing a 302 stock small block Ford Mustang next to them, I feel like they're going to try to set the track record right yeah. there. Yeah. Like yeah. they're going to get after they're it. They're going to try to go as fast as they can every pass. Yeah. No yeah. matter who's in the other lane, I feel right. like they're tough for sure. So what what state or area do you think that is the fastest in general? I mean, I know this that's yeah. all over the place, but yeah, I mean hard to say. I mean, I know in Texas, we usually have our fastest races in Texas. Really? I feel like cuz I mean, so many tracks down there they get really good weather mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. The rubber base is really good. There's a lot of money in the facilities to make sure the concrete's always reground if it starts to get unlevel. Um, it is concrete typically, start to finish. And I think that makes where they have some of the fastest races. It's going to be probably in Texas. So I want to backtrack a little bit. We usually start off with like, uh, I like to, on a personal level, like how you got started, like what got you into racing. Where'd the Firebird come from? Because I've heard you maybe drove that car to high school. Like, I don't know. what's So, give me the story there. So, I was 16, needed a car. And uh, across the street, I could see, you know, a couple of blocks down, I could see this car was for sale. I was like, oh, I, was like, I need a car. It's like, said $2,000. So I was like, well, I got like $2,000. You know, I was like, I'm going to go buy that car. So, I went over bought it. at 16, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just worked my butt off. Yeah. And, uh, your first job? Uh, first job, dry cleaners. Yeah, I checked in people's dirty underwear. 
<laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, and then I gave really, it, and then like, I gave it, I, somebody else cleaned it, and then I gave it back to him clean. <laughs> so, you know. Um, but yeah, I started with that. I mean, dry cleaners and then Radio Shack hustling phones and selling a little technology stuff. And yeah, you seem like a technology. Technologically advanced yeah. guy. <laughs> Some I can see you working at radio. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I got that car then. Drove it all through high school. It was a two eight V six automatic. You know, had a sound system in it. I put in there, started bumping along. Yeah, it was pretty cool. What, how? So, what year was that? That would have been two thousand two. Two thousand two. I was born in two thousand one. That's right around <laughs> like the Fast and Furious and all that. Right. So, what do you think got me into street racing? Wow. Yeah. It's such yeah. a turn off. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this story. That's true. That's true. I had, I had a friend in high school who moved uh, to Kansas um, from California. And the first one had been out for a little while. And uh, he's like, man, he's like, you know, that stuff is real. I mean, it's, that's, that's all based on what's going on in California. He's like, we ought to go out and just, you know, check it out. You know, a couple 16, 17 old kids, let's go get dumb. So we went out and checked out some of the local stuff in Kansas City. And uh, it was a much slower scene back then. And uh, it was cool. And, you know, it just turned into, man, you know, you make relationships with somebody. And it's like, you know, like, let's say Tommy here, make a relationship with Tommy and be like, man, your car is hauling butt, but I think I'm going to get you one of these days. You know, and you just start doing that. Yeah. And, I think you know, a lot of people can relate to that. I've heard that yeah. so many times. I'm building a car and I'm coming for you. you yeah. Know. So it's like, you know, I want to build this. I'm like, I know, like, you know, this magazine article, I can gain this. You know, this sticker gives me this much power. <laughs> and, you know, you, you go through this process of, you know, learn, or like self-education to figure out what you can do. And then, you know, you go out and you race them. You got them. All right, cool. But he always loses to you. Okay, well, let's go after Billy here. You know, you just keep going at it. And that's kind of what we did for the first, I don't know, 10, 15 years. So you just went right into street racing. Yeah, went out there, you know, cut part of my exhaust off so I could be loud and heard. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if anybody can remember what a 2.8 V6 sounds like from, you know, the 80s, but it's not really very pleasant. And, uh, you know, then the dreams come along of like, man, I'm going to swap this thing. And this but is I, all the same car. This is all the same car. And it's like, I got no idea how I'm going to do this. And, you know, just one thing leads to another. It just starts evolving. It gets, you know, different and better. And you rebuild it. And, you know, it's just like a Lego set at home. You know, you drop the thing. And you're like, oh, man. I don't want that to break again. So I'm going to add this extra piece here and you just keep changing it up. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to start over. Sometimes you can keep improving on it and you just keep doing it. So you and kind of taught yourself along the way. Or? Oh yeah. Yep. Did you go to school or anything? No, not for, I mean, I went to high school, Yeah. but no, I didn't do <laughs> like anything specific no, to what no, I do like now. Automotive school or anything. Mm -hmm. What did you, and there wasn't YouTube back. Well, there kind of was, but not really. No, so back like, then we had helpful things like forms. So you just yeah. read the words and sometimes you'd find pictures with links that are still active. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of times now, I mean, those links go away in like 30, 90 those days. Those old forms come in clutch sometimes. They sometimes, do. Yeah. They do. What's funny is a side topic, you know, every now and then I'd be like, man, I really need to remember like, or I need to figure out what I need to do with like this engine and what we need to do to accomplish something. I'll go through and I'll start scanning through and I'll find my own answers. <laughs> of when I like told other people how to do this stuff. And I'm like, man, <laughs> this what is too your, long. What was your tag back then? Max Mitchell. There you go. <laughs> That's funny. So where's the where's the Max name come from? So before I got a car, I had um little RC cars. Uh people know more now, like you know, Traxxas E Max stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I had an E Max when I was 14, 13, 14, 15, 16. I did too. Yeah. Was little. Yeah. My mine was a more the OG one, it shifted. Oh, that's cool. So, at two speeds. Um, my dad's huge into those. Yeah, they're pretty fun. Very expensive. If you, it really is true. Like my mom always told me, if you stop messing around with that, you can afford a real car. So that's what I did. <laughs> that's cool. So, what did you end up swapping in the car then? What was like the first swap that you did? Some clapped out three fifty <laughs> small block. There you go. And we got it from the high school I graduated from. They had an auto tech car that was donated. And it was uh, another third gen Camaro that had an iron headed smog emission 350 in it. And I was like, oh, let's get that one. And they sold it to me for like 150 bucks, got that motor, took it home. And I had been planning this swap for quite a while. So I had a set of um, Proline before, I mean, it was a set of Proline Vortec heads. Mm -hmm. And it's not like the big fancy Proline we all know today. It was some, you know, cheap company out there. And it, I don't even think they're related at all. Yeah. 
But I had to set these heads, you know, 180 cc. I, you know, did the thing you do when you have a lot of time and no money. And I went through, like, I ordered them out and did what I thought would work well on them. And that kind of stuff helped out and got that thing together. And it ran great. You know, I mean, it went 15.2. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, that's a lot better than going 17.8 like the yeah. 2.8 did. So, um, and then, you know, right after that, it's like, oh, we're street racing. You know, let's be secretive. You know, so Top Shot NOS Nitrous Kit. You guys ever seen one of those? Uh-huh. Goes in the air cleaner. Yeah. Yep. So I put that on there. Wasn't long until we took, just pretty much took the jets out. You know, <laughs> you don't get much nitrous from those things into the carburetor at all. You know, and it was carbureted. And then, you know, that lasted for a while. And it was small, like a 3D3, same heads, and ended up putting AFRs on it. And uh, never got rid of the top shot. And then I wanted a mile per gallon. And then I think it takes us to like 2007, 2008. We put our first LS in it. And I turboed that one right off the bat. So, so you're like pretty early into the LS. Yeah, deal. yeah, yeah. In turbo LS at that. Yeah. So way back there. So so when does Megan come along in the timeline? Oh God, do you guys want the real story? Like, should we actually like? What do you mean real story? Well, I mean we can go off of like when we got married, like that time Tell frame, whatever or do we want to go? We, like, we had two rounds. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it takes a couple tries. It does. My back. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember what year we got together. What year did we get together? The uh, first time, like fifteen. Eight? Oh, okay. So yeah. Eight or nine years ago. Yeah. We got together. We dated a while. I so was not like high school sweetheart. No, 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 no. I was going through my uh, first divorce. Had two kids. Uh, we got along really well. Hit it off, and then I wasn't ready for commitment, so I said bye bye, and took off and. Uh, he dated someone for a couple years, and then I decided to get married in that time frame. So I've actually been married three times. <laughs> so every time we got together, <laughs> she's the one in my DMs. I am. I am. A hundred and ten percent. I have been, yeah. I'm not the Can't one that goes away. chasing. Yeah. No, she's just like, hey, what you up to? Yeah. Yeah. I think the second time I, I inboxed him, I was like, hey, congratulations on your win. Uh, <laughs> I so always still you, followed so you like him, cars? you know. Where did you guys like meet, though? Uh, through a friend. A friend. Um, yeah, my friend uh, Jake and Anastasia Hachinski, who I met them at a car show. Through cars. Um, yeah, so pretty much through cars. He tuned her Malibu. No. Was it Malibu? It was a cruise. Well, cruise. Whatever. You know, turbo one four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He tuned it, and so that's, we met doing that. So, yeah, cars technically. But I wasn't in the car scene before that. Like, car shows were, like. You were just friends. That was, age. like, yeah. Yeah, the most I ever Yeah, she just got cars. dragged along one day. She's like, man, that's a good-looking dude right there. Yeah. <laughs> I was you just know? trying to get some heights back in my family. He's, pretty, he's a pretty handsome guy. <laughs> that's he's what she pretty, tells me. Yeah, he's pretty good-looking. <laughs> I mean, you know. So, yeah, so I shot my shot. He said, yeah, and. Then he got me knocked up and proposed. Not before Ditchner to go racing before, though. Like, yeah, man, he I, did. Like, we, Megan, I'm sick. I'm, we did. Oh, that's right. You're such a fucking shit. <laughs> he did. We started hanging out the second time. I'm like, cool, this is going nice, you know? And I get a message, hey, can't hang out after I think I got off work or something. Uh, I'm not feeling well. And the next thing I know, I'm on fucking Facebook, and there's live feed. No, there was photos. You won a race. He won a race. That's where he was at. He ghosted you. Yeah, for a he race. ghosted me for a race. Yeah. Priorities. <laughs> yeah. I feel like why is it when you ghost a woman that makes them want you so much yeah. more? Yeah. It seems like it's just the way it is. Hard to get. I think it's just the way it is. <laughs> yeah. She's been hooked ever since. <laughs> but let's go ahead and clarify. Everyone gives him a hard time saying that he married up and stuff. He got with me when I was like fat and not that great looking. So he really loves me. <laughs> Or but he just settled. That's the way you gotta, that's the way you gotta do it. You gotta see the potential. <laughs> you gotta see like Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean. so yeah. And then we've just been together ever since. Yeah, he proposed. Trying to figure out how to be a family. What's yeah. that like having kids and trying to manage a rate you know, two race cars now, a shop? It's a Thank lot. you, grandparents. Yeah. 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 Uh I mean my mom lives about thirty minutes away. And she's retired. My stepdad's retired. So they help out a bunch. And they have like 16 acres. So I have nice. two older boys from my high school sweetheart. Um, and so he gets them every other weekend. So if, if we have a big race and I have to be there, I'll ask her to, you know, help out. And they love going out there because they get, you know, to 
fish and run How amok. Old are you guys, kids? Um, Isaiah is 11. He'll be, no, I'm sorry. Isaiah is 12. He'll be 13 in April. Noah's 11 in a couple weeks. Yep. And then Logan is three in a couple weeks. Next week. Next week. Next week. Only Logan. Yeah, Logan loves it. Uh, the older boys think it's cool what he does, and they don't mind watching like videos of him racing. And if I could take them to a race and it's just him, that would be cool. But if I'm like, hey, you want to go to a weekend of racing? They're like, no. Hmm. Well, yeah. it's just. But they weren't born into it, you know. There was and a time where he was like that too. I was really. I didn't like. I didn't like cars at all until I was seventeen. And see, and that's what I told Ryan. I go. I mean, once they get into high school, and that's a choice. I feel like it might be different. And then whenever our old next door neighbors, they watch the Street Outlaws, so they noticed him on Street Outlaws. And their kids are the same ages as our our older ones. And so they were like telling our kids, Oh my god, you know, that's so cool and they're just like, That's Ryan. Like, what are you talking why are you <laughs> what's the big deal? You just know? Die. Yeah, like they don't understand, <laughs> I I don't think, or they just don't Yeah, they, I they're mean, just like whatever. So everyone we've had on the podcast so far, and we've only done like this is like the tenth episode. But most of them have been uh people, like local Ohio racers that we've always raced with for years. And most of them are on the, no offense, slower side of the small tire pack. Um, and, you know, right now, you know, it's kind of been the theme of this off season. Like, everyone's trying to figure out where they want to go with their cars or, like, there needs to be a split or whatever's going on. So, you're the first person that I'm going to ask this. Like, you're on the other side of it where you're one of the elite in the country in small tire, like, crazy fast. So where do you think things are going to go? Like, what's the next couple of years look like? What do you think needs to happen for everyone to be happy and meet in, like, a middle ground? You're never going to be able to make everyone happy. Oh, I, well, my, my right. first thing is, there's an off season? Right. <laughs> I mean, and, and maybe that's one of the biggest differences, you know. Um, you know, a common theme of what we've been doing with the car is the local racing at home was always run with you, bro, until Big Tire got murdered. And I may or may not have done that. And then um, retired it into a small tire car. And, um, you know, that, that's what that car is. It's just a fruit of years and years and years of blowing money into the thing. You know, not with a lot of income and just making ends meet and just doing what I felt was best, next best decision. Yeah, I so mean, You don't come off as like a super rich dude. No. No, we're, I mean... That's what a lot of people think. It's just, oh, well, they have more money than us. Right. We And we get that a lot. I mean, even whenever I got Ryan. with Ryan, people were like, oh, she's with him for his money. I'm like, where is it at? Like, yeah, there's no there's no savings account. There's no. no nothing. There's, you know, every month it's kind of like, oh, I hope I got enough to cover this month. You know, I mean, that's every month. Off and, topic real quick, but like how much of your winnings, like that's probably – half your salary and just winning races over the year probably i mean yeah i mean 150 percent of my winnings go back in the car right i mean it's it's everything yeah i mean it's everything plus some i mean it's it takes a lot and it helps winning helps just to kind of soften the spending on the hobby and i mean it's it's a tough thing um but as far as the rules going next year but I don't know what they're going to have to do. I mean, I feel like some people probably should fall down to a tree street type class. And I mean, I think that's why that's there. You know, that's when I was coming up into the sport. I mean, I didn't want to go play with a low five second radial car. You know, I wanted to go play with a 630 tree street type car. And I, you know, accepted that fact. And I went and ran with those. And if I happen to win that class and it paid three to 500 bucks, sweet. Yeah. You know, I mean, as long as you're winning enough to pay for your travel plus some, I mean, it's always a good thing. And, um, but yeah, as far as today's sport, I mean, there are some promoters that are leaning towards splitting off the classes and that will, depending on the money, that's going to kill kind of like more of a limit of more of an unlimited, uh, unlimited car like mine. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm not going to go to Kentucky for 5,000 in most cases when there may be a $10,000 race in Texas. And that may be where we see a bigger separation in some of the faster states again is going to be, you know, the fast guys are still trying to kill each other. You know, we're still trying to go fast every weekend. And um, that may become more apparent. Yeah. Um, but 
uh, if they start putting money, like big money in a true street type, like, you know, all steel, all glass kind of class, then, you know, I mean, that's what a virus is for. You know, that's what we're gearing up, but you know, you making changes they, for. They, if, but like, I feel like now the, the, the reason that small tires got so out of hand is because the payouts are so much. Mm -hmm. So I feel like even street car classes, like you got cars that are, there's four oh, second yeah. street cars. Oh yeah. And so I think even then it's, it's a huge challenge for even just an average Joe. Well, there's a car that we got to meet, uh, Trevor in, uh, Waggler. He has a little bit bigger combo than mine in a Camaro. And it's all steel, all glass, factory yeah. firewall, factory suspension, front half. And it's fast. Mm -hmm. And he can easily, you know, they put 20 grand on a true street type class or any kind of all steel, all glass kind of class. I mean, that's the kind of car just going to fall right back into that and say, come on, let's do it. Yeah. Um, eventually, there's probably, it, it's hard to, oh, oh, let me rephrase this. Every class out there, the older the class gets, there's always going to be those guys that are just driving away from the class. And it's, I mean, whether that's the guys with a lot of money and they have really good knowledge that they can buy, or it's the guys have really good knowledge and have a smart use of what they can do with what they have. Those kind of racers are always going to be the ones that rise to the top. And everybody knows that, you know, and it's just the way it is. Your combination isn't real exotic. I don't no. think it's like a, I mean, it's all expensive at the end of the day, but mm -hmm. it's not like a, Pro line or a Hemi or no, nope. all my stuff you can go. It's not billet. My turbo build is a little more mild because now we have like CNC pouring on the heads that you can't buy from Jags, you know. But I mean everything else, my motor. I mean you can call you know any major parts warehouse and you can buy everything right then and there. And that's what we liked about the combination, like especially with turbo, is if I had an oops, if something went wrong, in less than seventy two hours we could have the motor remachined, parts in the motor, everything overnighted, and we were racing that Thursday night, Friday. You know, if we blew it up on Saturday, you know, it was running. I mean, it was out of the car Sunday, machinist on Monday, and we we're on the road traveling Thursday night, Friday morning. Yeah. So and I like I mean, I like that part, you know, because I mean I don't have the money to sit there with a bunch of spare parts. So we just kinda go until something goes poof and then we figure it out. Yeah. It takes a lot of sacrifice, that's mm -hmm. for sure. To be at the top of this thing, like a lot of people, I feel like when, that work regular jobs, it's it's harder probably to find the time. But mm -hmm. even even some manage, you know, like Joey, I think he still works in mm -hmm. elevator. Yeah, he's job. He's got a decently f more flexible schedule. Yeah. It seems like. I mean, he's got limitations, um, but you do give up a lot of advantage if you can't go to some of these races and have a Friday night shootout or something, yeah. you know, cause it's always good to get information. I mean, it sucks if you go out there and you hurt something Friday and then you're scrambling all Friday night and Saturday trying to get it back together. But in a lot of cases, it helps prepare you for the, you know, the road ahead. So it, it, it's going to come, I mean, no matter what class you put out there, it's going to come down to the guys that, you know, put in the work, put in the effort. So something else I want to ask you is, um, is, are you ever, you think you'll ever be interested in starting with another car, like another small tire car? Or do you think you'll ever always just kind of hang with the Firebird or have you been interested in maybe starting another build? Yeah. We're going to do a Fox body next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, I told Megan, black. um, and I told my other guys that if I ever managed to wreck the car that I was going to build something else and I've wrecked it twice, but apparently not bad enough. Um, <laughs> right. The, uh, I mean, I'd love to jump into like a C6, C7 platform. I need to just look cool. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to go with. Because I'm sure it bugs you that like every like car that. has its limitations. And I'm sure you found limitations with what you have. And I'm sure you, you're, you're a smart guy. If okay. I bought this chassis, I yeah. if I had that, I could do this. Mm -hmm. and I could start going even faster. So I just wonder like if you've ever thought about starting with a fresh, you know, chassis, a new car, something different. It like I want to strip, I want to gut mine out, scoop everything out and put every new piece of tube in it. And you know, at some point we'll probably get to that. And especially cuz I mean, I way overbuilt it. I mean, I built there's so many gussets and oversized tubes and everything else in it that you know, thankfully when we do have an oops, I mean, nothing really ever gets damaged. You know, as far as the driver compartment, all the chassis like that. fabrication and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I how had to learn how to do all that. 
I had some help early on, and I had a couple of chassis guys come in. You know, guys like, oh, I work for this person, that person, and they come in, and you put them to the test, and you have them try to build something. You're like, okay, well, you're really not that great. You know, I'll just take over from here. I had one guy, uh, Chris Anoko. He was pretty on par, and he had learned with, like, Larson and Terry Murphy back home. And if you've never heard it, but back where we're from, I mean, they call it, kind of call it the land of the pro mod. You know, there's any major manufacturing company in most cases is probably within 40 minutes of where we live. You've got a lot of them there in Missouri. Yeah, yeah, Missouri and the Kansas side, all right around Kansas City. So um, so you do get a lot of talent kind of floating around, and then we started taking reins of doing it all myself because, I mean, nobody's going to be motivated to work on your project as much as yourself. You know, you go home and, you know, like, man, like, you know, like let's say a motor. You know, you threw a rod out of it, something's hurt. You know, nobody else is going to be more dedicated in getting your motor out and getting it to the machine shop, making that time and making it happen than yourself. You know, you rip out a wheel tub and it takes out inner tin work, tears up the quarter panel, something like that. Nobody's going to do it better than, or nobody's going to get it done as fast as you will in a lot of cases. So it's best to learn the skill set and just take everything you can in your own hands. And it helps out a lot. Saves money that way too. Yeah, saves money. And, you know, labor is so much. And depending on what you're playing with, you know, you can usually afford to do it two or three times, or you can afford to do it well enough once. And if it's a non-critical component, I mean, you can go out there and you can learn from it. I feel like a lot of people are discouraged in this day and age just because of social media and what people might think about their work and stuff like that. I think a lot of people need to get over that a little bit. I think when you started TIG welding for the very first time, first of all, welders are the worst. Welders. <laughs> oh, yeah. I found out what's worse than welders is painters, like mm-hmm. professional painters have been painting for 86 years and that paint doesn't match or they're all terrible and I've been welding for 95 years and my grandma, could, yeah. yeah. I, I've seen some really ugly looking stuff go really fast. Right. Yeah. So it's not always the end of the world if it's ugly, as long right. as it works. Yeah, as long as it works and it's safe and <clears throat> nobody gets hurt along the way, I say keep learning, keep trying. I mean, that's what the whole sport is. The whole sport has been, I want to go faster than that dude and I know I need to do this, this, and this to try to get there. And when money facilitates or time facilitates if there for that to happen, you should do it. You should take that step. And that will help you give you an edge for next time. What's one of the coolest things you've learned in, in your years of racing? Like a trick or like something, like a speed secret or just one thing? Really self-fabrication. You know, picking up a TIG handle, you know, learning how to use that. You know, being able to build whatever your mind can imagine. That's really the biggest thing. Um, after that's going to come into like EFI tuning. Yeah. You know, just making sure you know how to operate your system when something's going wrong, how to diagnose it quickly, or how to find a workaround fast. Did you ever go to school for tuning or anything like that? Just self-taught. Yep. Is it right. Holly or what is it? It's currently Holly. Yep. Is that have you tried all the other ones? Or mm-hmm. You like Holly the most? Yeah. Yeah, I think the only thing I haven't tuned is Mtron at the moment. I've never even heard of that. It's at the booth. They've got a booth up there, PRI mm-hmm. today. Um, I, I feel like I'm too scared because I just started tuning the Falcon like this season, halfway through this season, and I was super intimidated at first, but I enjoy it so much more just because like if I lose, I don't have to, I don't, like I can only blame myself. Yeah. Like the more I'm doing on my own, the better I feel about winning, but also losing. Like I'm not like, Bill fucker made me lose. <laughs> you didn't put enough in it. So I've really enjoyed tuning and it was intimidating at first, but it's so much more enjoyable for me. And now that I actually understand a little bit of it and you know, I'm always learning, but it's, it's been, it's been a lot funner. Yeah. Say. But Holly's been simple. Yeah. And I feel like if you're, if you're trying to step into any competitive edge right now, I mean, Holly and fuel tech are going to be two most. Mm-hmm. And I feel that Holly is easier. Um, the, uh, biggest thing I recommend for anybody, even if you have no idea what you're doing on tuning, you know, most tuners, won't have a problem kind of showing you what's going on. But if you hire a professional tuner and you go to their shop and you have them tune your vehicle, I mean, they're going to set up the timing map, the fueling for it. They're going to have like, you know, 95% of the tune is going to be there, done. It works. It goes across country. And then after that, if all you got to do is mess with the three or the five things for power management, I mean, that's a big step, yeah. you know, and from there, take over. You know, adjust your traction control yourself. You know, your dual That's VSS exactly stuff. That's exactly what you know. I did when I bought the Falcon. Right. Up until that point, I had nothing that was fuel injected. Yeah. And I remember looking at the Holly that day, and Chris Pilato was showing me everything, and I was like, I don't, I'm not going to remember all this. 
but I could see there was a boost versus timetable, and I could see there was RPM, you yeah. know, two step, and I was like, right, we can play with this. This is what I do on the six AL. We literally so. all of our dad, all of his data he had was a GoPro on the back glass yeah. facing down in his yeah. cages. Like, that's all he had. Yeah. Oh, or too lean. Yeah. And then you just lean. start. You start playing with it when it's idle, and you start. All right, let's see what it sounds like when I put like two degrees of timing in it at idle, mm-hmm. and then you just start messing with it, and you're like, hmm. You know, the, in the lab. Yeah. 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 And your brain just goes crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the nice thing is a lot of your power management schemes now are all just line graphs. So, you just get a reference of where you are on the surface and what you want to do there. Do you need to pull power? Do you need to add power? And then, I mean, as you, you know, build your, you know, your learning blocks up, you, know, you can start getting into more advanced things. And you can start noticing things that may help you out later in the run that's getting upset at this point. I mean... You just got to fa- have a foundation to build off of. So, but I think anybody, you know, like in your case or your case, when you're going out there and you pay for somebody to do all the setup on the car, you know, and it runs, it drives, it starts, it idles. I mean, those are all frustrations. And then all you're doing is modifying the power curve. I mean, it makes it a lot easier to step into. Cause I mean, the having a driver tuning combo of being the same person, I think is very instrumental in making, you know, a program fast and consistent. Yeah. There's no one that can really feel a car and what it needs like the driver. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to relay that information, sometimes the driver can't give that to the tuner as well as he needs to like verbally what the car needs. But you know what it needs if you're driving it and you can Mm -hmm. feel it from the seat of your pants. And then the same thing starts to fall the chassis side. So, I mean, as we get faster in the sport, I mean, which one of us can remember everything about a pass? You know, do you remember if you pulled the wheel 90 degrees to the left, you pull it to the right, you know, so things like steering shaft sensor, you know, all these, all these different tools that we have available to us now to kind of get information on what we've done as a driver to make our game better for the next pass. Yeah. I mean, all that stuff helps out. So, um, one thing that like I, I picked up tuning pretty well, uh, but one thing I usually always have to ask Billy before, you know, like when we go to a new track, I'm like, well, here's my shock settings. I don't like. What do you think? I'm still kind of trying to figure out that kind of stuff. And the we reading a surface. Maybe. Yeah, but so our my first year out with the Falcon, like I did so well. Um, I don't mean to like toot my toot my own horn, but like it was hard to want to change anything. Mm-hmm. And after a while, we went through a cold slump, and we finally changed around some bar angles, which we were so scared to do because it was working so well on really bad surfaces. And so I guess I just wonder, like, how often do you do you change bar angles every every surface? Like, what do you, I mean, how often do you go through that? Well, there are some races that like Todd Spears. Todd Spears will change the bar angles in the lanes, right? Based on what the guy in front of him did. Um, I kind of get in the same boat, and I really try to get some passes on same surface and same chassis setup before I make any big changes. Um, like I would move weight before I move bars, but it also depends on what the tire's doing and it depends on what we've learned with the, what that chassis wants. So like in my case, the Firebird has probably five or six normal weight scenarios I'll move through. Um, two different stators we use and now we have two different blowers and uh, we have two different gear sets for those blowers depending on what the DA is and then we have um, the bar angles. And on the bar angle, well in crank center line, um, on the bar angles, right now we have a kind of fast surface. Um, you know, if it's a sticky track or on a slick, I've got a position on that that I really like right now. Um, back of the track, I have a situation I like a lot with the bars and then everything in between, I've got one for that. Um, so we're working within just three bar angle sets and, um, there are some efficiencies we can find as we kind of get more knowledge on it and stuff like that. But I mean, we're still learning yeah. every pass. And I mean, that's like right now, like the blower combination, like it's moving really well, but we're giving up so much on the front half. I mean, in the first 60 foot. And that's what we've really switched for is just to figure out 60 foot. And I'm really bad at testing now. I know, every pass costs money. Every trip costs money. Yeah. And we do have a racetrack at home, but we have a really great facility getting built right now. That's going to have nice, smooth, flat concrete. That'll be as good of a track as we can find anywhere else in the country. So we're really anxious to get on that. And then we're going to start moving the bar angles around, you know, that five eighths of a move, maybe three sixteenths of a move, you know, just really tiny changes just to kind of start figuring out what we want this thing to do. 
sometimes those little changes can be the difference between you know a couple tenths mm -hmm. and you just all of a sudden you find it yeah like i remember i was racing once at kd and um we simply added a couple flats to the anti-roll bar and it went from you know picked up three tenths and i was like whoa credit. we found something here yeah and is that because it went straighter or it it just went straighter it's a, it was on the truck it was leaf spring and mm -hmm. put a couple flats and negative in it and all of a sudden it would go over the transition a lot cleaner and that it, the night you beat perry yeah it picked up three tenths just a couple flats nice. and a roll bar yeah yeah then you know breaking down what that changed and how that helped your program out i mean just and just trying to build that knowledge base back up helps out so much and i mean some of our best improvements are found when i messed up you know, like I left the line and I, let's say I turned off the time to retard on accident or, you know, we changed weight on the car, but I forgot to change ride height and the car is sitting lower with a frame plate of the bars and it just works better, you know, but we have the sensors on there to kind of look at it and it's like, okay, so we did this, we messed up here, but the car did this better in these areas, you know, mm -hmm. how can we use that again? So that all helps. It's awesome. Did you have anything else? I want to hear the story. So the last race, uh, so when we were in uh, at that airport race. So, Halloween Havoc. Yeah. So first round, you go up and you do your burnout. And did you, how, like, when did you figure out something was wrong with your slip? Because it was completely flat. I'm <laughs> when like, I, okay, so wait. When I so open I'm the like, door. I'm watching this burnout. I'm like, here we go. Like, Casey Mack, I think you're like fifth pair down. Like, let's see what he can do. The surface looks dirty. I was like excited about to watch you. I'm like, this dude's got three PSI in his tires. I'm like, there's no way. And then I'm like, okay, so something's wrong. And I was like, uh. And then Megan, like, yeah. everybody's getting that. Uh, so good. So when did you realize something was wrong? And okay, so a little backstory. We went to Tubes um, this year, and they've been a pain in my butt. Um, we're not able to get in the last more than 18 to 20 passes at all. So they barely last two sets of slicks. And... When we use them, we get really great consistent numbers out of them. Even with turbo combination, we started to see some improvement with them. So it's been one of those things I've been kind of wanting to hold on to. But it looks like the there's not enough meat on the tube itself to work on my 13-inch wheels. So mm -hmm. the rubber starts to get kind of tight around the valve stem. Um, it eventually pulled the whole stem off. And uh, We've had it happen a couple of times on the Falcon. It's cost me two races. And it sucks. So we put... We put new tires on one set of tire old tubes, but they looked perfect. And we went into that race and, uh, you know, the spectators are sitting there watching, they're looking over the wall and they're super excited, but they weren't covering their ears. Not yet. Well, I want to give them a reason to. So <laughs> <clears throat> I lost the gas hard and, uh, you know, we built a lot of wheel speed really fast and it went boop and it popped the tube off. I had no idea. I think it was Justin Lee. Ran in, ran in front of you or something or <laughs> opened my door after you backed me up. And he's like, you got a flat on the left. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the car. I'm like, I didn't really feel like it's leaning that bad. I was like, oh, I'm just going to send it anyways. Let's just go for it. And then Tyler came up and he's like, we got to put air in it. We got to do something. So um, everybody started noticing like this tire is like flat. And we don't have a lot of air in it for first round that day. We were, I think we were running like eight and a half pounds. The dude you were racing was probably like, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, they were really good friends. They actually stayed in that really shitty hotel, motel oh, thing. Yeah. So they got, they, got, they got to experience all of that with us. Yeah. So we were kind of, we grew together. So <laughs> they gave us their time as well as our time because... They're, they're, we luckily, they are really, really good people. We gotta That's get awesome. that story next. <laughs> and, and luckily, most racers want to race. They don't want to win on something stupid. I mean, it's not like we're broke, broke. It's just, yeah. it's kind of a safety thing. Yeah. And, um, kind of a safety thing. I, I mean, whatever. <laughs> it was a safety thing. Yeah, so, for sure. If, for those that don't know, these racing inner tubes, they have uh, scythes in the side of the valve stem to let air out. So, when you air the tube up, air in the tires gotta go somewhere when it's mounted. So, it's gotta go out right next to the valve stem. So uh, my guys were trying to pull the valve stem up, make it seal against the tire, and uh, to try to get some kind of air in it. And it just kept going down. And then Buster Kent, you know, she calls ninja him. Ninja Buster. She calls him a ninja. He is an older He's dude. He's built for, have you guys seen his figure? He is. So he picks up the parachute and picks the car up off the ground, I swear. Yeah. To get the oh, weight off the tire. 
And then they got a couple of, they got us a couple pounds in it. So I think we got about six pounds in it. Seven. Yeah. Six or seven. Went to stage. So it was probably down to like four. And then um uh, I don't even know. I guess the right tire pressure got changed down. Yeah, Ty, Ty lowered. Uh, I think it was Ty. Tire air. Yeah, one of them lowered down to at least even it out to maybe make it. You're like one of those Honda Civic guys. Yeah. Who your tires. <laughs> so did you I mean, like tell as soon as you left like it was off? I was just waiting. So we didn't change tune up or anything like that. Like, so I want to. Sometimes I think about wanting to put in like a retard button to kind of slow the car down. Um, or like having a multi-map switch on the car, but it's like I'd rather load my tune up after I make my other pass or my first impression of the surface and just stick with it. Mm-hmm. Slow off the button, it takes off, and it's like a dog out of a hole. And that was a whole different problem. But <laughs> we were in some bad airs over fueling. And we take off, and it's just like, <sighs> and I see the other guy over there, I'm like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> All right, let's just see what happens here in a second. And then like, <laughs> finally the car cleaned up, and it took off, and I was like, yeah, and then I felt like I started running over the tire, and I was like, yeah, it probably is kind of messed up right now. Okay. And, then, <laughs> and then I get into the shutdown. I pull the chutes, and I'm just waiting for this thing to like try to turn or do anything weird. Yeah. And it was good. And then we come around the return. We go on the turn off, and it's like it's full on. <laughs> oh my gosh! And I'm like, okay, like it's messed up. Yeah. And uh, then you were but, frantic and all upset because you couldn't find your cell phone. So then he's yelling at us because oh, yeah. we knew that we had to bring down a tire and stuff, and that's what we were doing. But he didn't know because he didn't have his phone. <laughs> so normally I have like a little phone mount up at the top of the car. And since we've gone blower or maybe because of the tire was shaking around or whatever, it shook it out of the mount and ended up somewhere in the back pit of the car. <laughs> and being a hatchback car, I mean, that does forever. Oh, yeah. And uh, so it was back there by the taillights. And, yeah, you know, overall, I was kind of like, you yeah, know, that was a pretty good pass. <laughs> Find my phone, look at the dragging, and I'm like, yeah, that's what I thought the surface would hold. I mean, it was a good number. <laughs> Didn't even bother. Yeah, I was like, you know, like the front half sucked, but like the other increments were good. Yeah. So I was like, oh yeah, I was like, we're in business. Like we so just got to figure out what's on sixty pounds. First round foot. on Dusty, we'll just go ahead and put the tires at five pounds. Yeah, r- yeah, five pounds, rip the tube off. You know, you just have a decay going down. Change the tire and the. The yeah, so, we, so then we had to change the wheels and tires because we were running big tire. So we went ahead and switched both of them because why would we just do one to get it back to the so trailer? So then, then we started a nice hectic, you know, double entry day. I was so salty too because I'm like, dude, there's no way. And then Ryan just makes the best fucking pass I've ever seen on four pounds of tire. <laughs> it was fast. <laughs> it looked fucking fast too. I was like, Jesus. Well, yeah, I, was, I was concerned too. I was like, man, I just hope, like, I hope everything goes okay. Yeah, you and, me, you and me both. Rim. In like, my head. Auto. Well, at that point, like everybody was getting loose out the back door and everything yeah. else. And then just four pounds just right on through there. No problem. I wasn't right. a fan of that that decision. That was that, not I did not get a vote in that saying. That whole race I think you were stressing out quite a bit. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot. Yeah, but yeah. I've I've made passes in the rain, sprinkles. So Do you get nervous when she races? No. No, I've I've got way more faith in her racing than she does. He does. It's so sad. I mean, it's not sad. It's good. What was it? The last one? You asked if I if you could turn it up, and I told you no, and then I lost. I was like, damn it, I should have had you turn it up. He goes, I did. That was as fast as it was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. he, so he does. He has good faith. I mean, he didn't. He told me after I wrecked at, Ozar, or at US 36, after I wrecked, he ran down, and we got back to the trailer. He goes, I wasn't going to run after you. I know you were fine. He goes, I felt like I had to, though, because everyone else was doing yeah. it. <laughs> He's like, I didn't want to run all the way down here. You don't want to get judged by some other yeah. people yeah. running as fast yeah. as you can. Yeah. Like, oh, man. And the husband's over here going, she's fine. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, in the video, I was. I just kind of sat there like, holy shit. I like I was like, the same thing. Yeah, that just happened. Like, wow. Cool. I feel like you got to wreck one once. That's like, I, uh, <laughs> Kayla Morton had checked in on me that day. She's like, how's it going? You know, you doing great? I'm like, mm, I lost and I wrecked. And she's like, well, way to get your first wreck out, you bad bitch. That's great. And I'm like, thank you for being so positive. I have no input to this conversation because I don't want to jinx myself. <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> I mean, I made probably two and a half, three thousand passes before we had our first oops um, early last year. And then I was like, okay, like it's done, it's over with. Has it ever been driver error or has it been like a parts failure where like, um, like you leak track. oil or track problem? So we did, we've hit the wall twice. And the first time I did it, I was on the stock bottom end LS and the track was good. And 
I was like, man, I was like, let's go after Caprizi's like radio record. We're at this horrible track in like Battlefield, and it was moving. I and mean, we were going like bottom 80s, high 70s, which isn't fast enough to get there. But we were going like 159. I'm like, we had the mile per hour. Like, we just had to figure out the front half. Like, it was booking. So we had Bank Robber with uh, uh, Justin Reed driving it. Uh, we had him, and I think it was semis. And if you haven't been down Battlefield, Battlefield – is like that highway you go down where it's like like you have separation and concrete every 15, 20 feet. And I got dumb and I just wanted to get after it hard and it lost the radial and moved really fast. Cause I mean, if you've been on radials, on radial, some, yeah, radials are tough. And radials are tough. And that's, that's what she had an oops on is you, wheel speed quick. Yeah. They what? As cover. soon as you lose it, it's like it has no sidewall bite. Nothing, and you're just on along for the ride. So I did what I could, and we hit, and uh, hit pretty flat. So it didn't really do. It did more body damage than anything. It's pretty superficial. Scary as shit. Yeah, and then the next time we wrecked, we were going a lot faster. It was in the shutdown, tapped the brakes, and there was fluid on the track in the shutdown, and the car just turned right, f- like faster than I could even comprehend. Like it was. Like, I mean, you're just, you do a pass, you drove down the track a little bit, like the track wasn't great, it was what it is, and you tap the brakes and all of a sudden it's wall. It's just instantaneous. I was like, what is going on? Lost steering control, came back across. I was racing Randy Westmoreland from Leash, mm-hmm. and he was out front and he was slowing down with everything he had. And I ended up getting in the back of him a little bit and gave the zombie a couple of characteristic Kisses. black O's on the side of it. <laughs> I felt so bad. And then, but there was like, there was nothing I could do. Like I ripped the steering column, yeah. like trying to turn away from like everything I tried yeah. to do. I've been there before. It just sucks. You just, when you get out of control, you just long for the ride and you just kind of sit there going, this sucks. Like, this is it just happens horrible. so fast. I What's mean. What's the hardest weekend you've ever had? Like most hardships, like. Oh man. Anytime I go to an MPK race, <laughs> like I think the last <laughs> one was pretty bad. And it was like, normally we go to the track and we have like a three strike thing. And which you should have done at kid where you wrecked the second time where yeah. it was really bad. Cause we had a blowout tire on the way down. Yeah. You lost first round cause the car was acting up. You couldn't figure it out. And then there was something else. Oh, I had asked you not to, I'm like, let's just enjoy it. Sometimes you just know. And he was like, no, 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 no. I, I think I figured out the car. I want to, you know, make a test yeah. hit. And I was upset cause my brother came and I'm like, we can just hang out with the family and you know, you can get to know them and he's like, I just want to make sure it's right. And I was, I was so Yeah, so pissed. I made a control oh, pass pissed. and then getting a shutdown, wham, wall. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, every race has its own, you know, ups and downs. But, yeah, this last, we, we've been trying to go to an MPK small tire race uh, for Almost, the last couple of years. Yeah. And this, this was our fourth attempt to go to one. It was the first time we actually got the car there. And uh, we went to go, like, warm up the car. It was good. Do the buy for Friday night. We're like, great, it's fantastic. Go up there. Never had a problem before with an oil filter. Man, blew the O-ring out on the oil filter. Dumped all the fresh oil I just put in the motor that week mm-hmm. all over the track. Mm-hmm. In front of everyone. <laughs> and his response is, I feel so bad. Like, everyone had to keep coming up and telling him, it's okay. Like, we know you didn't mean to do it. And then we, that weekend just was problem after problem. So, like, we ran over, like, out of nowhere, our transmission catch can which never had fluid in it before filled up overfilled mm-hmm. ran over that on the tire and it was just problem after problem i had a brake line break yeah that weekend just all kinds of little dumb things and it just when we went from uh well the weekend before you did what did you win the weekend before mm-hmm. and the car was pretty much yeah pretty much ready yeah. to go wasn't it and so yeah. it was like we pulled it out and then it was like game just, over yeah everything, know, just, just, everything just kept like coming up on us and biting us in the butt and it was tough. And that was probably one of the worst weekends I remember recently. Um, just because, you know, we were ruining the surface for other racers, you know, and that, that sucks. And, you know, I was ruining it for ourselves. And then we had so many people there watching and so many people knew the car. You know, and we're just, people down yeah, we're yeah just, we yeah. could have really given them a good show. And, you know, cause a lot of these people were like, Oh, I've you're finally coming to one. And we don't ever get to see you or. Right. Yeah, like your incident at Ozark, or just out of nowhere, just oh yeah, it's just that a heartbreaking. Weird. It's that just a heartbreaking weird. day. You that, know? Was, that was weird that Joey never left the starting line. Yeah, his car didn't. I believe in bump. angels. I believe it was Joe. And my car slung a mm-hmm. piece of Mallory metal out of it and got oil on the tire. And then it what rained after pretty much right after that. Didn't yeah, that, it was. Well, a, I, the think, I think I think I made one pass. Wasn't there? 
There was a big oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. A really bad yeah. At the yeah, big end. Studa Baker got destroyed. Yeah. That was a bad weekend, man. So, I mean, and it happens. You know, sometimes you just have bad weekends like that. Have you, you? I feel like you're not somebody that's ever been close to quitting at all. Like, no matter what happens. <laughs> Every. Where'd you, where'd you get, like, the stigma <laughs> to not have any quitting? Yeah, I mean. Well, there's, there's, t- I mean, she, she usually talks me out of, like being, being married and with kids now, like I want to quit some days, and especially after we wrecked in Wichita. Like we didn't talk for probably like two, three hours on the way back. And that was cause I was running mental math. Like what can I sell the motor for the transmission and what can I do? Like, you know, get this car sold off and just, you know, I'll just go and be like, you know, a track tuner, you know, I'll just, it is what it is. I'll make yeah, an income like that. Help people, help other people. Win. Yeah. Still be involved, but yeah. just not a driver. So, um, but she always talks me out of it. You know, she gives me an ultimatum, like she's going to divorce me if I sell the car. <laughs> so that means no Corvette, no Fox well, body, no nothing be, else. Well, I guess we left out the part about us meeting. I saw him at the track when I, when I went to the track, remember? Years ago. Like years ago with like Jake and Anastasia. Talked. Yeah, before I met you at your shop. And I took a picture of Jake's car making a pass. And the only other picture I took was of his car and we didn't meet for like six months after that, I think. <laughs> so yeah, like I'm married to the car. It's not I'm not married to him <laughs> per se. Like it's a and that's what everyone they'll be like, Oh, how much would you sell the Firebird for? And he'll give out a number and I'm like, plus a wife. Like I come along with it. Like uh, it's a package deal. Sorry. I get that. Cool. Yeah. Well, I feel like with like his S ten, like or our whole family is so attached to right. it. So my mom yeah. with my dad's Nova. She's right. The same way. And you I can't just sell it. I don't want him to ever regret selling it, especially yeah. now that we do have a kid, you know? I mean look at Boosted. Like I think Boosted eventually wants to pass down Nanner to Cooper. I think that's really awesome. Do I think we'll have the Firebird that long from now? Maybe not, but you know, we might have something. Yeah. So I just I don't want him to ever quit because I know how much he really does love it and his passion and drive for it. And he's good at it. What do you think you would it. do if you didn't like race all the time? Does you have any other hobbies outside of racing that you do? That's it. Yeah, I mean, and the only reason why I'd want to sell it after like a major issue like that is like you look at all the man hours it's going to take to do it, especially doing it myself. And I haven't, I don't have the financial means to pay somebody to do it. So it's like, okay, you know, I got three young kids at home. You know, I got a wife. You know, we got our dog, and. You know, if I got to put the car together, I mean, it's like, okay, let's like, like it's going to be two to three weeks of me not coming home till one or two o'clock in the morning of, you it's know, rough. I mean, it's, it, it is tough. It is really, I mean, so you got to give up not, all this family you time. You're not made of money. No. no. no I think a lot of people really have that misconception. Like it's, there's some well, people that do have a lot of money, but they don't do anything. They don't produce any results from it, but there's some people that have money but work really hard too. And those are the ones that are real dangerous. Right. I mean, I tell everybody whenever they think, oh, you know, you guys have it so easy. You make all this money. And it's like our biggest, like we have some great sponsors. Do not, we have some fantastic sponsors on our sponsorship, but our biggest sponsor is Casey Max performance. That's us Yeah. right here. I mean that plain and simple, that is our biggest sponsor and it's a mom and pop shop, you know, mm-hmm. like, I mean, there's a reason. What do you guys do? Do you just do tuning? Do you do builds? Um, pretty much just tuning now. Yeah. You have any employees or just you? Yeah, I've got a couple employees, and they help out. Like, we get a vehicle in, and let's say it's got you know misfire. I mean, almost all of them have misfire, you know, because the customer doesn't put you know fresh gas in it for two years, and they want to bring it and get a tune. So usually we're selling you know fuel in them or battery or spark plug, something like that. And that's what those guys typically will help out with quite a bit, is they can do that while I'm actually working on the file. Um, and just getting us ready because in order to make a profit out of it, I mean, you got to do, you know, three to four a day or so. I mean, you got to do quite a bit. And like where we're at now, the building is so big. And we, I, I had this grand scheme of like, hey, you know, or we're in our eighth year business. And I was like, yeah, let's start getting like all these projects. We'll start slinging pro charger kits on them. We'll start doing like cam kit stuff, stuff like that. And that stuff comes with so many complications when you're not doing it yourself. Yeah. And it's not worth my time to you know pick up the tools and do it myself versus when i can go tune a car and you know the profit's much better i'm not hurting my back i'm not hurting my hands stuff like that because i am getting old and uh i feel i feel so old well you are so. uh i feel like i'm going on 60 and old are not even 40 yet no i'm 37 no. and uh <laughs> um 
So, I mean, it's, it's, I enjoy the tuning part a lot more. Is there like, I'm sure there's a lot of cars you work on that teach you something that you can apply to your own car. Mm -hmm. So if you're tuning all the time, I feel like you're learning all the time and you can always apply it back to your program too. Right. So you're always, you know, you're always seeing something new. Joey's tuning cars now too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, there's so many projects out there that need tuning done to get to the point where you're moving graphs around and that's it. And, um, you know, I mean, it's nice to be able to go out there with the confidence that you're not going to usually, you know, blow the thing up. And, you know, I mean, sometimes there's bad luck out there and sometimes that happens. But in a lot of cases, if you build a quality piece, it's going to last. I wanted to go back on something. So that 5.3 you guys had that you said went 159. Mm-hmm. How in the hell? Because if it was stock bottom in, mm-hmm. was it an LC9? Is that what it was? Or? Yeah, it was an LC9. So Eric had gotten this core motor um, from uh, a customer for a couple hundred bucks and he just threw it up on the shelf in my shop and it sat there for a few years you know like covers off of it nothing crazy and i think the heads were on at the time and you know we had that quarter million dollar come up mm-hmm. race coming up and i kept kicking around this idea i was like eric let's take the big block out let's just do a turbo ls i was like it's got to be way lighter i was like we don't need the power I was like, I feel like we can probably go 530s with this thing. Because that's an aluminum block. It was an aluminum block. So he's like, man, he's like, okay, he's like, I got a motor. He's like, let's just do it. I'm like, okay. So we put a diaper on it. And we're like, we're going to put a diaper on so we don't have any problems. Pull the the motor off the shelf, start going, like, take the heads off of it. And it just looks horrible. It looks so bad. Megan's scraping, like, a quarter inch of carbon off the pistons. (laughs) I mean, the block was so bad. Like, it was so... (laughs) Oh, it was so nasty. So... Um, gosh, what did I do? I think I just put an oil pan on it, threw some Chinese studs, some gaskets on the thing, and uh, <laughs> you know that Elgin 1840p sloppy stage two knockoff cam. Threw oh, that in there. Trailblazer intake. Yeah, I did springs and push rods. I mean, that was your basic stuff. I didn't put rod bolts in it. I didn't put rings in it. Nothing. And uh, we pulled did the, you the ring. No, I am not one of those yeah, guys. So look, I, I don't know if you've ever seen. I'm building this full size C1500, and it's I got a LC9 for it, and uh, you know it's the first engine I've ever built kind of by myself. And so I'm like, like for you, it was like oh, I just fucking slap this thing together. I'm like, dude, I'm so careful. I like, think you put rod bolts in it, right? Then you took them back out. I took them back out. Oh no. Yeah. Well, yeah, because. It's gonna lose I didn't one. realize that egg, egg, egg shapes the rods yeah. or whatever, so I was like, I don't know. The, the like, less you do, rod bolts. right, the less you do, the better it is. I got the rings. Yeah, I don't think you need to. <laughs> it just smokes them. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, when Eric and I pulled the heads off this thing, this deck surface was so bad, we called our machinist friend. We're like, hey, we're trying to get this thing running in 24 hours. Like, do you have room, like, time to, like, deck this thing? He's like, no. He's like, just go grab a sanding block and some 300 grit and wet sand to deck surfaces. We're like, what? Like, yeah, do it. I'm like, all right, cool. Did that best ceiling motor ever. <laughs> and, um, couldn't lift the heads on it. Couldn't lift the heads on it. <laughs> How much boost were you putting that thing, if you don't mind so, me asking? So, when it was a stock motor, um, or I'm sorry, when it had stock 243 heads on it, or 799s, one or the other, um, whatever it came with, the boost was, like, 43 to 46 pounds. Was it on meth? Oh, yeah. Like, it's the only way to be. Yeah. Well, I'll be on. Mine's like a street truck build, so it'd be like the 85 and intercooled, so I don't know how much. As long as you intercool it, and I, I tell all my customers this, I mean, the number one things that kill a motor are going to be injectors first, so always buy a high-quality injector you have the utmost trust in, and you know they're going to be consistent. You start with that, and after that, great boost control. So if you're not going to have boost spikes, if you're not going to have sticking wastegate issues, stuff like that, that's the second biggest killer that kills motors. So injectors, wastegates. After that, spend as little money as you want, and it's going to be fine in most cases. And it'll, when it rears its head, you just lose performance. You know, like if you have a, a cheaper turbo, like I ran VS turbos for a long time, there are way worse units out there. You know, if you kill a turbo, usually you're not going to hurt the motor. You know, worst case scenario, you may explode a compressor wheel, goes into the intercooler gets stuck <coughs> you know um even if you get in a compressor to go through the motor a lot of cases the motor is going to spit it right out so it's not going to hurt anything in most cases the tune-up is very critical when mm-hmm. you're dealing with something like that ignition timing and yep air fuel there for a little while you're running oilless turbos weren't you and I, yeah not the comps you didn't, you didn't like them or no we ran them for 18 months or so oh, really? the comps yeah it was quite a while um Just i loved the them ones? yeah 
Yep. So you, we gave them a pump of grease per event day. So about every five to six passes for maximum protection mm -hmm. on the bearings and for fastest pool time. And we ran our VSR 8896s for five or six years on the big block in a twin configuration and had really good luck with those. Had a couple of them near the end. They were just kind of starting to, they just wouldn't last very long. We either have smoking issues or we've been a shaft, something like that. So I was looking for doing something else anyways. And then comp came on board. They're like, Hey, we can get you in this kind of unit, try it out. And we worked back and forth on a couple of new ones they came out with. And, um, gosh, they're great. Right. We lost a couple of pounds. Um, cause they had the billet aluminum center sections and we've always stuck with uh, a stainless steel exhaust housing and everything. So we can have a 8896 and only weighs 21 pounds. It's pretty awesome. You know, you're not putting a lot of weight on the yeah. front of the car. And yeah, you have to have true. two of them. Those are usually like 50, 60 pounds at least. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can do two of them for that weight. Um, and the comps were fantastic. They picked up like 10, 12% more power mm -hmm. um, on the same boost numbers. And they dropped spool time from 3.2 seconds to like 1.1 seconds. Like wow. it was insanely faster on spool up time. Something I've been seeing a lot lately, and I want to ask while you're here. What do you think about these guys that are now putting wastegates on the cold side and not running exhaust wastegates? I want to tune a car with that, but I'm nervous because it's not my car. Yeah. But I do want to, I do want to see some it's information. On it. I've got a lot of friends that are starting to do that, and th those will all be coming out next year. And I'm really interested to see the information on it. Yeah. So, cause, I mean... Obviously, I think Mark Mickey is one of the first guys to really broadcast that he was doing it. And the first thing me and several other racers said is like, well, maybe he's not paying, paying for the turbos. And maybe right. that's why, you know. I mean, because you're spinning them as hard as possible all the time, basically. From the sounds of it, though, the shaft speed isn't that bad. When, when you, you bleed off some cold mm -hmm. side pressure, it makes less out yep. of the exhaust. Yeah. So, yeah, you're not building the exhaust pressure up. You're not driving the shafts any harder. Um, and they're not constantly speeding up. So it may not be as bad or scary on turbos as we think it is. So, but I mean, you also have to have a combination. You're not overspinning. You know, like mm -hmm. my stock 5.3, I mean, that was a VSR 8896. And it went that fast on one of them. And you can't tell me that thing wasn't screaming for dear life the whole <laughs> freaking time. Oh, yeah. So, um, just a little 96 wheel. Yeah, just spinning its butt off. <laughs> so, if we had, you know, something like that without any shaft speed data on, um, I mean, I'd be nervous to do that with. But, you know, being a VSR and having two or three more in the trailer, maybe it was worth trying. Yeah. <laughs> so if I had that combination back in the car, I may try it. I mean, we could, I guess we could always try with Elvira. I can do that. And I really like the fact that TurboSmart made a pneumatic actuated one of those now. So now us poor Holly guys, we can do it without having to have some fancy black box or, you know, some H driver or something I've like that. that. Devin Vanderhoof posted a video of that the other day. So, and it's half the price. So it's like, okay, now it's kind of getting the ballpark where it's worth actually trying. What are some things that you can't race without that make your whole program easier and smoother? Like what's some things you bring to the track that you have to have that you couldn't race without? Uh, well now, so where we're at now Megan. at the program, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, really, if, if she's not there, a lot of times we don't win. Yeah. I or mean, their schedule's she's fucked up hard. or like, I think one time they went out and he's like, yeah, the gates don't open till this time. I'm like, mm, bro, that's what time the racing starts. He's like, oh shit. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously? Yeah. I mean, once you complete the trip to get there, which I mean, that's, that's <laughs> a battle. battle. In a, that's a yeah. battle in itself, yeah. you know? And, uh, you know, like our truck, our truck's climbing up on 200,000 miles and I'm getting nervous about it. So, I mean, things like that. Trailers, trailers don't last. Mm -hmm. And you get, beating. you get 70,000 miles out of a trailer that's still got all of its panels the on car it. car takes a beating in the trailer too. Shops. Oh man, our car <laughs> took a hell of a beating just when we went to film. Oh yeah. Yeah. We lost our front struts. They locked up. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's hard on everything. How many pairs of tires do you usually bring with you? Like, do you bring Hoosiers, Mickey's, like, prepared We're, for anything? I do. I do have two little Amazon <laughs> tire racks in the trailer now. And um, now the racing we do, I mean, let's face it, we're doing a lot less street stuff. And, you know, I'm tired of going 6 O's on the back of the track stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, when I say 6 O's, I mean, you know, 550s to 630s. And... So that narrows up what we do. And I am a big believer in Mickey Thompson's for anywhere there's rubber base. If I got rubber base for 60 to 120 feet, I'm putting a Mickey on it every time. 
because I know what the 60 foot's going to be. And, um, so now I just try to make sure you like, I got one extra set of those in the trailer. Um, you know, I or so hard when I put Mickey's on, I've only done it two or three times, but for some reason, like my, my last attempt at war in the woods, when I have somehow made it <laughs> to four cars, I went through, so I was riding the struggle bus so hard. So like I was trying to leave as hard as I possibly could because I don't have a lot of dick out the back. So I was trying to personal best 60 foot. So mm -hmm. I brought the Mickey's and I'm going to try and 60 foot. Well, first round, uh, it shook the tire at like 60 feet, pedaled, got back in it and made the rest of the trip. And then second pass, I'm, I, I, I like every round I either moved weight or adjusted shocks or like when you shook the tire, you stuck it really good initially and you kind of left on not much power and then you brought all of it in at 60 feet. and then it power wheelie <laughs> so then i was like okay well let's take weight out of it so I, I took all the weight out of it but then it spun third round and then i was like i'm gonna put the weight back in it and try this and then i don't know i struggle like for some reason i haven't been able to make a hoosier wad up which is like i feel like that's what everybody at one point you get to a 60 foot where the hoosier just won't take it like you need a stiffer sidewall but i haven't been able to get that i don't know if it's because i'm slow or what but the falcon for some reason just it, it likes hoosiers. hoosiers for some reason you know squat in the car well that's what we finally did this year was we finally took away some bite and we made it more of a what is it like a 120 yeah it's around 120 it was what 160 it was 170 yeah is it a leaf spring car or is it a it's, it's, four it's a triangulated four triangulated four link. so how short is your upper bar he does the bars. I'm not there yet. I'm I think they're like learning. eight and a half inches. Okay, so it's a lot like a Mustang. Yeah, it's okay. like a Mustang. Yeah, if um, typically when you're doing that with the Mickey, you need to flatten out that lower bar. And you have to pay attention if you have housings with spread, like if you have multiple holes, top and bottom. You got to be careful where your bar placement is to the axle center line and the rear spread. And that'll change your bite and how the dynamic of it reacts to the chassis and the tire. And the Mickey, you usually to have to goal for trying to spin it without just trying to crush the shit out of it. So, but the Hoosier can be more forgiving because you can, you can take a lot of anti squat, put in the Hoosier. The Hoosier is going to try to stay around because if you mess with the sidewall on the Hoosier, I mean, it's plastic. It yeah. feels like, I mean, it's, it doesn't want to deform at all. And if you can just stick and apply power to that, like a radial, it seems to work pretty good, but you That's get what to, we always did with the Hoosier. I mean, we took it to a radial prep track and it loved it. Yeah. One thing I watched at that War in the Woods, and I was trying to figure out how some of the other cars were making it off. Um, like, I don't know if it's just me that struggles, but maybe yeah, I don't think you struggle. With no, we all, everybody struggles. Yeah, but for some reason, I feel like sometimes War in the Woods, especially in the day, like it can peel up, and there's a lot of variables and. There's some, some people being pretty gentle the first time. Yeah, so. like that's why this was that was the first race that I watched other people and I was the fast guys and I was trying to figure out what they were doing and I was like, they're not crushing the tire very hard. And so I incorporated that into my tune. And that's when I started to finally make it sixty feet. Like just the first point five seconds, somewhere in there, I would leave real soft, <laughs> let the tire rotate and yeah. then dump it in. Yeah. But then I was having trouble power wheeling every single pass. Right. So I don't know, I'm just so for something like that, though, I mean, there's different ways to attack it. One of the simplest things we'll do is if we have weight, we have, we have different heights of weight in the car. So we may not want to risk down track traction. So yeah. we'll take that weight. And if we can drop it 12 to 14 inches, it'll help with the power wheelies. Or if you have adjustable uh, crank center line stuff, like we have um, upper strut mounts now that we can move up and down. Um, quickly, uh, you know, half an inch to an inch can make a drastic difference in crank center line, especially with power wheelies or initial wheelies and things like that can help out quite a bit. Um, it just, as you learn the car, you'll see, you know, what a 25 pound weight move can do, you know, in that situation, I mean, maybe the easiest thing for you to do would have been to bolt on 25 pounds, but you gotta be careful where that goes on. Yeah. You know, and shoot. That's, that's probably some of the problem with my cars. I don't have that much adjustability. You know, I've got two weight bars, and they pretty much go in the same spot. I yeah. need to be running two, one, or zero bars. Yeah. So I need to, maybe we need to fab something else up. Try to put weight on the front. Maybe yeah. try putting it on the front control arms. One year, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you look back a couple of years ago, you'll see that I had anklets, I called them. And I had 25-pound weights hanging on my front control arms because I didn't want to slow down the front end rise, especially for like tracks like H-Town or other places where 
we were needing the front weight down track to keep the steering in it, which I will say right off the bat with the zoomies, boy, it steers nice at the back. Really? So, because I mean, it really does add the downforce. Then I bet you it's five to six hundred pounds. And when I was, I think Rob did the math the other day, and he said, and we were like, we weren't believing him, but you must, he must be right. It's it's a lot. I mean, sidetracking here a little bit, but when I was getting my you know shit pushed in to the three thirty by all these pro charger cars, I'm like, okay, what's the difference? And then looking at them, it's like, okay, guys with collectors and headers, they're just pointing aside and it looks nice, and it's loud. Mm-hmm. They weren't getting a 330 really hard. But then you start looking at cars like Adam Plunkett. And like I'm racing, I mean, I raced that dude three times in one weekend at Wichita Falls. And he just drove out of my life every time. I'm like, what is he doing differently? It's like, we have the power to outpower him. Because I mean, the turbos, we always had the power. We can go as fast as we can apply to the ground. And I was like, it's got to be the downforce from Zoomies. He's got the front end on the ground. He's able to steer the car. And with any weight behind the strut tower, that's always. You know, not just nose weight, that's rear weight too. And if we have five to 600 pounds of downforce pushing down the whole car, especially in the middle and the heart of it, and we allow the spring package, let the car transfer, get the tire hooked up, and then we're able to drive this thing back down. I mean, because yeah, just because the zoomies are in the front, the way they're angled, they might push near the middle of the car. Right. Yeah. So ours are angled more up than like back. Yeah. And shoot, we're out filming. That's the coolest thing. The, the faster the people are around you and you listen, the more you'll pick up. Like we heard, Bodie talking with his car when we were in California. He's like, oh yeah, he's like, I got three different sets of headers. And he was talking to somebody else. And he was like, depending on the angle, he's like, we'll generate wheel speed on the big tire stuff at MPK, or we can make it stick on a shitty track just by moving the angle of the Zumi. And he's like, it'll completely change how the car works. Yeah. Wow. I'd imagine if you got a car that likes to wheelie a little bit and then you make it not wheelie with some downforce, it would be extremely fast. Right. So, Billy, are you going to go big block pro charger in the new car? I think so. Copy. Who was it? Somebody. Oh, Raleigh. Raleigh Dale. He goes, you better tell your boyfriend if he don't put a fucking big block pro charger on that new car, he's a dipshit. I said, oh, I already commented on the actual post. I'm like, yeah. I was <laughs> a little covered. worried about, like, breaking them and stuff. Yeah. I heard people, they pedal them. And that was his whatever, biggest fear. That's why it so took him so long to finally get there. Right. And we're, we're 85 passes in. 80 of them are with the 121. And the 121 is so much smaller that with the same boxes driving it as the 136 F3, that they're like, this is like your bulletproof blower right here. You can pedal it, you can mess with it, you know, but once you get the control figured out on it, it's like an easy butt. I mean, especially if you guys are taking control of your own power management skills. Yeah. I mean, it is simple. The yeah. bit that we the, do all the power management, I tune everything, but he just does power management now. The two biggest things that tripped us up on it is fueling on trans brake release, you know, because you don't want to be real lean on the trans brake because you can have a lean pop motor shuts off, maybe you blow your intake off. Um, so you want to make sure you got fueling close to target on the brake, and that's going to be weather dependent. Um, so pretty much you set it up for the track for that day and you're done. And then um, we were overfueling in Kentucky. That's why the car was so slow out of mm-hmm. the hole. And then um, knowing your blower speed. So really you want like two gear sets, you know, one that maxes it out because why slow it down? And then another one maybe a little bit faster and maybe overspin it if you have to um, or go with a bigger blower and then just watching your DA for the day. So like we made a move from with the 136 from like 400 foot DA to 4,000 foot DA and we had to speed the blower up 5,000 RPM in order to get comparable on the boost and it still wasn't even all the way there. But it's pretty easy afterwards. So, have you ever experimented with uh, hanging weight on the rear end housing? Has that been effective? Have you ever messed with that? How much? I don't. I mean, I don't know. I've I'm, we've always kind of talked about like trying it out, especially for like a bumpy track, because you'd think if there's more weight like that, just pressing down on the the tires alone, it would keep you know more contact with the track as it hits bumps. I don't know. Have you ever messed with it? Or? Oh yeah. There's <laughs> lot. There's lots of theories out there on how much is too much i know when we go to have you ever been to darlington backside yet mm-hmm. okay Ugh. probably one of the worst yeah, right terrible He's so had bad experiences there i was out of town we ran 400 pounds on the diff Holy shit. we ran an extra 300 pounds in the chassis so we were 700 700 720 pounds heavy Jesus. just to That's get awesome. the thing to move down it 
to go six one and to be happy about going six one. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean we put big tires on it and we win it every time we put big tires on it and we are happy if it goes six oh. Yeah. On big tire. Because I mean it is so bad. It's yeah. par- it is really bad. I remember I think the best I've been there is like six twenties. And the as far as the diff weight goes, I think a lot of times we'll run it as a safety net. Um, you know, we will usually average 60 to 120 pounds on it. And there are situations when we take it off the car does speed up. Um, and there are situations that it helps to maintain the 60 foot based on grease level of the rubber or dew point or whatever else that's moving around some, if the track's really consistent, I don't think there's much of a need for it, but if you need, you know, a little extra insurance to make sure the 60 foot stays within a couple hundreds, it usually helps. The thing with me is. Since I am typically on these front sides lately, until we get this 380 in there, I'll have a little more legs. But I am usually outpowered. And so any chance <coughs> I can get to take weight out, I'm trying to. That way mm-hmm. I can hang. So it's hopefully, not necessarily the engine. It's mainly if you're out of turbo. But, I mean, the, a, a more stout engine will give yeah. you some insurance that you're not going to blow it up yeah. every round. Yeah. But That's a tough thing, too. And I, this is probably bad to say, but man, I've lost more built LSs than I have stock. Yeah. I mean, our stock, our stock motor was putting out well over 1300 horsepower and it did it for 75 passes. Wow. Yeah. But to be fair, every time he came back or right before you go up for a pass, he'd say, Hmm, you going to be okay with pushing it into the trailer? Cause I'm shoving it down her throat and I'm like, let's do it. You know, oh, yeah. every time was going to be the last time. Yeah. But I feel like it's, it's easier to Say, hey, let's just give it everything because mm-hmm. they don't owe you nothing. No. No. And that's why, I, I mean, my only question is, is the diaper on? Like, if we're going to do this, <laughs> let's make sure the diaper's on. Yeah. <laughs> just in case, you know. So the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was uh, you guys started a YouTube channel. It's been two or three years now, hasn't it? It's been a... Coming up on two. Is it two? I think we're, I think we're just past a year and a half. Yeah, it started really taking off last year around this time when we were heading out to California. Yeah. But I wasn't really sure what I could post and what I couldn't post, so it wasn't... Yeah. Right. Not a lot of content. Yeah, not... Yeah, not clear about it either. They're like yeah. Super. It's very gray, and I'm yeah. like, knowing my luck, like, I'm going to do something to piss off someone, and I'm going to... It's just not going to be good. I got a copyright notice from Discovery one time. Did you really? I believe it. Yeah. They, and it wasn't even something that they filmed. I didn't rip it off there. Right, right, right. I filmed right. a race, a No Prep Kings race. And it was the literally the first one ever. It was at Bristol. Oh, and yeah. And I was there filming. I was helping B-Rat. The video's got like 3 million views now. Yeah, it was like one of our best videos. Yeah. And they like tried to do a copyright strike and copyright takedown on it. Well, I mean, back in the day. And I had to email them and fight about it. Yeah, back in the day when we off. first got together, we did the street outlaw and they were very, like, you couldn't have your phones out. I mean, you couldn't do hmm anything back then like they were making people put their phones in their pocket wow. but now i feel like they're a lot more lenient because i mean yeah. every time we've went i've been able to facetime the wives yeah. you know for whoever's driving or whatever so it's gotten better but it's just yeah so about about two years but the last probably six months six to eight months it's taken like, off pretty good. Is, yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. How many subscribers you got? Is that now? Like um, I'm I'm at like uh, fourteen, 14 five. five. Yeah, yeah. so I'm like five hundred yeah. away from. Maybe my, we can get you guys to fifteen. That would be great. That is my Christmas. About twenty. <laughs> that would be even better. Twenty, 20 by Christmas. Let's I do love it. Okay. it. I would. I'd probably cry, honestly. Well, you're doing a good like, job. You guys I appreciate it. it, and I mean that means a lot. We've had a lot of fans it takes come a lot up. Of time. Well, yeah, it does. That understands like how much effort because like. It takes twice the amount of time, especially if you're doing something in the shop. Right. You gotta set the camera up, and then you gotta like, oh well, I said. Sometimes down. you just don't want to explain what you're doing. You just want to get to work. Yeah. Right. Or and I mean, little things. We, like, and we've lost tons of footage of bad microphones. Yeah. And he did like, a whole break thing about his breaks, and I'm like, hey, <laughs> can't use any of this. Like none of it. <laughs> yeah. Not a you know, not a drop. We've made so many mistakes like that. It happens, but. Was that kind of an adjustment for you, like being on camera and stuff, or were you kind of, you know? I was getting used to it. You know, like doing Limpy's live feed every week for a while mm-hmm. was, was helping a lot. And then it was able to just get, I mean, I, I just try to put the facts out there on a lot of stuff. You know, if I just tell you exactly what I'm doing, it seems to help out with me being natural in a lot of cases, and that just seems to make a better video. 
But I think, I mean, the hardest thing is like Megan trying to find time because Logan wants to play with the laptop whenever she's got it. And he editing. wants to watch race car. You know, he sees daddy's race car. and then Especially if he hears it. Yeah. 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 So it's, I mean, it's rough. Like, I mean, that's why I always give you guys such cra- I mean, and, you know, Alice, I mean, you guys work your asses. It's not easy. Do you ever have any questions editing or? I'll keep even? that in mind. And I mean, I told him from the get go, like, if I do this, I'm going to do this for fun. Like, I'm never going to let it take control over me because I don't want it to ever make me unhappy because yeah. I feel like the minute you become unhappy is the minute it's going to show in the videos and then I don't ever want that kind of image on us like I I want to be the happy-go-lucky we bicker we fight but here we are at a race with the family or you know whatever so I don't like I was supposed to get one up from Friday and Saturday last week I got Friday up I haven't even started on Saturday yet you know I, I think it's great a lot of racers have started YouTube channels and uh it's great for it only can, helps grow the sport. If mm-hmm. you can, yeah, mm-hmm. and if you can get it to the point where it pays for your gas and entry every video, oh, that helps so yeah. much. That's you know? what, and that's what we were talking about. I joke around and say it, it pays for my extensions and my Botox, and I'm a happy <laughs> camper. So as long as I can just keep that at a good, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'm I'm making it in life, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. getting rid of the wrinkles and having long hair. You can't go wrong <laughs> with it. So. What's the actual name of the channel so everybody knows? It is Casey Matt. Is it Casey? It's Casey, Casey Max, Max Firebird. Firebird. I'm yeah. the one that's that. Uh, yeah. Ugh, yeah. So it's easy to find. We'll yeah. Get you to 20 by Christmas. That would be so awesome. Well, how, I mean, my first, like, what was it? One of my first ever videos was, wasn't it when you wrecked at Ozark? It could have been. I think so. Yeah. 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 That was like, because you were like, what are you going to name it? I'm like, I don't know. Casey <laughs> Max the Firebird? Like, I, what do you name a yeah. channel? I'm not create. Well, I mean, I can be, but I'm not. At that instant, I just thought it would be better to have Memorable the name out there, I guess. The so it's whatever people can easiest, you know, easily remember is the best. Right. right, and I figure, you know, I mean, we're known as either The Firebird or Casey Max. I mean, there's people that legitimately think that his name's Casey. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. like, they're like, or even when we were checking in for PRI, she's like, well, how do you spell that? He's like, KC. And she's like, so... Kilo Charlie. I was like, no, like <laughs> Kansas City, yeah. you know, like <laughs> Casey, so... Yeah, it went easy with it. And then he's been on my case. He's like, I think you should do a baking YouTube. I'm like, uh, that seems like a <laughs> lot. Need to do that. Well, I, I, I mean, I think, you know, well, my race, race racing is pretty niche. You know, we got, we got a lot of people, a lot of supporters and stuff like that. But I was like, you know, there are things out there that a lot more people are interested Broad in. Broad things. Yeah, like baking c- cupcakes. Th- that was Everybody's hungry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, hunting or fishing. Yeah. Or reviews on toilet paper. So. <laughs> Only fans. <laughs> <laughs> it always evolves from it starts at one thing and then no. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Eventually you're going to see my butthole on every. Come on. Now, so. Am I not allowed to say that? We could build another car real fast. <laughs> we could, you know, we could just do this. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I mean, you guys would probably make a killing if you guys are showing your chocolate starfish. Why don't you guys do it? You're a dad now. You got to make... Got morals. My dad I don't want to embarrass him. <laughs> yeah, same, buddy. Same. I, yeah, got no, a, I, got, I got a mom and dad that would disown me, and I couldn't live with that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> My dad would be like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, he, I don't... <laughs> he would just be like, are you serious? Yeah. But it's it's okay. definitely like <laughs> at least some people like take the like I think some people kind of take the easy way out like you could totally start an OnlyFans yeah. and you could do an eighth of the work yeah. that you probably put into the YouTube stuff right but you work hard and you guys are gonna have a a, a really good you guys I think keep so on it and, and I mean and that's great. what everyone says is like I can't believe you guys don't have that many followers I mean I don't feel like it's our videos doing bad it's just we don't have the people hitting the subscribe button. I'm like, I don't know. Do it I need to time. show my chocolate starfish? Really and we were looking at that what it's going to take. And that's, that's what I try to tell her. I was like, it's going to hit a breakover point where it's going to take off. I know, but I'm that person that I'm like, okay, well, I've put this much time and effort. Like, show me growth. Yeah. And you guys have been in a lot of our videos just in the background. <laughs> yeah. Like racing. And there's a lot of comments on a lot of our videos, you know, like War in the Woods videos. Like, God, that black firebird, man. Right. You know? And so, you know, it, it, the the Firebird and the KC Max name is out there. I just don't I just don't know if maybe people don't know you guys have a YouTube channel. Yeah, and I mean there were so many years where we didn't and so many people would ask constantly and that's what finally pushed me to do it. I think the Morks 
uh, Ashley started her mm-hmm. yeah, they do. They journey. Do. And so um, I think she kind of really got me. She's like, Megan, it's worth it. Like, if nothing, it will at least, like you guys said, pay for the fuel, and pay yeah. for the hotel, you know, what like, help and it's with traveling. Out of Google's pocket. Right. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I mean, mad. we've got some GoPro stuff and you know, some support items for those. And really, the next thing is probably getting like a camera that we can take the some pictures with, yeah, yeah. Stuff. and then you know, that'll take up the quality quite Likes. a bit. But we, I mean, it seems like we get a pretty good um viewership per video, like yeah. people are sticking around watching a lot mm-hmm. of it. I and really don't think you guys have a lot of haters. No, no, she and the singles ones that we one do, out. I single them out. I have no problem. I actually have a. You guys want to hear my idea? You think they'll like? Let's hear it. Okay, so I think the next hateful comment I get on YouTube, I'm gonna screenshot it, and I suggested to put it on the Firebird page, but we'll probably do it my page because it's just not appropriate. But whoever makes the best comeback gets like a free shirt or something. Oh, that's good. Then it right? your supporters to fight back. Yeah. Exactly. Which, I, like I mean, that. they all do anyways. Especially, I, do. I love our fans. Because, I mean, the minute anyone puts, especially me, down, I mean, I don't have to say anything. It's fun, though. It's fun to yeah. poke, you know? What is there to hate about you guys? I mean, he's literally the night, like... Other than that, he's a fast I mean, like, there's, yeah. always, right? there's people <laughs> that hate winners for yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, especially if like you beat like their, you know, their top. Boy. I mean, even with like you guys, we get a lot of your guys' fans in our, in, not inboxes, but on comments going, well, Billy's been working really hard and he's almost there. <laughs> and Tommy's, yeah. I think one time I was like, Tommy had a rabbit our foot shoved up are, his ass. Like, <laughs> yeah. What do you, I mean? Our supporters are die hard. Dude, yes. they oh. are. I think I screenshotted one of them and sent it to Tommy and was like, dude, get your fans back into your side of the yard. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. want this. Some of them would die on a steak for us. In a yeah. heartbeat. And yeah, I don't know if that's... That's awesome. That really but it's, is it's awesome. also motivating, too. When you yeah. hear that, like, oh. today, I mean, just walking around PRI this weekend, we probably had five or six people stop us just to tell us how much they appreciate, you know, just our dumb content yeah. on the face or on the uh, YouTube channels, you know, just talking about simple things, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like some of the same questions went over tonight, just, you know, kind of showing some of our story and they really dig it. So I learned a lot about you today. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I think a, a lot of having a successful, uh, YouTube channel is not just being a racing video, you put right. race coverage, you know? And not, nothing to them that just do race coverage, but there's you guys are, channels that does that. You guys are a face behind your name, right? You guys have a story, and like you guys are interesting people when they're like you got a family sure. thing going, so, yeah, yeah, it helps, yeah. And most, I mean, like you said, most of our subscribers and they do love it, and then you'll get the one every now and then that's like, eh, you know, yeah, like this sucked, yeah, and it's like, well, why'd you watch? Uh, yeah, I mean, why did you take the time to yeah. like even they keep make the comments? Thank you for- but Say then you, you get comments watching. like, hey, I'm going through chemo right now, and I just want to let you know, like, your videos make me laugh Those when I'm, you mm-hmm. know, or we met a guy at PRI this weekend, and he was in a motorcycle wreck right before Paradise, Gangster's Paradise, and we really wanted to see us race and couldn't make it, broke both of his wrists, and he's like, you know, your videos, and I'm just like, uh, can I hug you? Like, yeah. that's so nice that you, yeah, you I know. I I met that guy yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that kind of stuff makes me keep going. Yeah, you know, because clearly it's not the money yet. <laughs> Soon I'll be the breadwinner. Definitely helps people. Yeah, I know. When they go home. You know, they had a shitty day. They just want to sit down and watch YouTube. And see, and I've never been the YouTube type though, and that's what I feel bad about. Because I'm like, subscribe, 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 and I'm like, I bet you I only follow. I'm only subscribed to like. 12 people on our, you know, but I don't watch much YouTube anymore. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, Logan, if it's not Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Funhouse, or race, like Roads to Racers, (laughs) there's a very good possibility I haven't seen it, you know. Even like Jimmy Dale, like I scrolled through his, (laughs) and I'm like, you didn't even include the video where I like beat the guy, and he's like, yes, I did. I was like, oh, my bad. I didn't watch all of it, you know? Like, I was just looking for myself. Yeah. (laughs) So. You're a skimmer. Yeah. Yeah. He hates the skimmers. (laughs) I'm a skimming motherfucker. Guilty. I am so guilty. (laughs) I'm so impatient. But then I think that's the hardest part of editing, though, for me is. I sit there and watch the same clip. Like you got to keep people's eyes moving. I know. So try to change scenes every three to five seconds. Okay. Change clips. Change because even if it is like boring content, if right. you keep their eyes moving, they don't even know. Right. Like, 
they're still engaged in the video. Right, and I feel like I dissect mine. Like, I'm like, oh, no. And, like, the first time I watch, I'm like, oh, that's funny. But then, like, the 17th time I watch, I'm like, okay, you know what? I can just get rid of half of this shit. Like, it doesn't make us, you know, People's a big deal. People's attention spans in the last 10 years have gone. Shorter, shorter, mm-hmm. shorter. That's why TikTok blew up. Right. People only want to watch for three seconds. Like, it's just as much dopamine as, as they can get in a short amount mm-hmm. of time. But it's overstimulation. But luckily, we have some. There's a lot of our. Uh, thankfully, we have loyal followers that like. Right. I I can still make, uh, 45 minute long YouTube videos. It's like a a TV episode. Right. Almost. And see, I'm terrified to go longer than 30 because I'm like, well, what happens if everyone's clicking and they're done by 12 minutes? Like I don't know. But I've never done the research or know really anything to. I mean, it took me how long to get us to get our first check from. Oh, yeah. YouTube because like my months. name, my social security name has always been my maiden name through mm-hmm. both marriages, including and including this one. And finally, I had to switch it to Mitchell's, so it all matched. I'm like, you guys, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it took like a year though to get the whole process even started. So oh, yeah. when I got my first check, I was like, oh, this is address, not, yeah, I'm like, this is something. nice. And then like the next month hit, and I'm like, oh no, it was all from this last year, you know, like. It's okay. Just That's keep okay. working at it. Keep working at it. You're doing great. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. You guys aren't too bad yourselves. We appreciate you guys coming and being on this thing. Thanks for finally Sharing having us. Lives. It only took you guys forever. Really well, you guys are clear and freaking candy. I know. Yeah. Dude, this is like the third time I've talked to you because you've always been obsessed with my brother. I know, but now you're my best friend, remember? We're best yeah. friends now. Yeah. I so actually... I finally broke out of my shell and I was like, hey, Megan, like, What's up? Like, why aren't why aren't we cool? And then you're just like, I don't know. I thought you. You're I the re- one that's quiet. I really you're thought. Yeah, I really thought that I was too much for you. And so, like, when I got around, you were just kind of like. So I was like, Oh, he does I'm not pretty, like I'm me. Shy. I'm introverted. He's very shy. But then once we started talking, I was like, Okay, well, you're my new best friends. Fuck Billy, you know. <laughs> fuck Billy. Yeah. It's usually fuck Tommy. When's when's has Tommy ran yet? Yeah. Now it says Wyatt ran yet. That's it, the new thing. Is even, it? Even for the PRI thing this weekend, they said um, Bill and Billy and their brother, Tommy, <laughs> <laughs> at the PRI. <laughs> you're, you're like the stepchild of it's the a, group. He always Tommy. gets shafted on that I'm deal. Billy's and people will openly do it. Like, it's just you two, though, right? Like you got, There's no other... Okay, so you're not even like a middle kid. Like You're the baby. You're supposed to be... I should be the one that's Yeah, you should be the but, Billy, but... Well, I guess they just nailed it the first time, and they just kind of accidentally had you, and we're like, well, I guess we better take care of this one, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. I still think he's a better driver than me. so. I beat you on the tree today at, at on the Porta tree. I've never done that. It's age. I pulled off younger. three 002s. Never happened. Kayla tried to get me to go against her. I'm like, I'm not making an ass out of myself <laughs> with you right now. No, thank you. Hard pass. It's because he wasn't drinking. When he's drinking, I don't know why. He gets a couple drinks in him. Triple, 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 triple. I like triple a few times today. But not enough times. We went all the way to game seven today. We did best out of seven. Three Jesus. Two. Three to two. Should have put the pig skin on it. Three to four. Do your math. Seven. <laughs> Three to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be five. It's one guy. One I guess we only did. I don't remember. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, I got to pee. So. We got you reservations. Guys your dinner to Fogo de yeah. Chow. We, no, we, we got it. And okay, you're cool. going to ready to get us an Uber, and we're going to meet Amber and Eric at. Okay. Uh, was it Izzy, Izzy and. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I Duh. appreciate you guys taking the time out of your nights to. I'm going to do the podcast. Absolutely. Thank you for having us on. And thank you for all the advice. I'm sure. Gonna, You're welcome. I'm, I'm glad I could help. You know, I know that I'm very educational <laughs> in this game. You're yeah, well, absolutely. Well, not everybody. People are very secretive. <laughs> yeah. That's, that speaks a lot to your character that you're willing to... It also speaks to how smart he is, because if he's willing to share a little bit, imagine how much more he knows. Well, and that's what <laughs> someone said. They're like, you know, Ryan doesn't keep a secret. He will literally show you everything that he just did, help you do it with your car, and then it's like, you're, it's you. Like, Still you're the one you. that's, you know. Knows I'll never catch up to him, so. <laughs> oh, There's fast people out there. I mean, we, we have there people is. we chase after. And we're just now feeling like we're getting to where we want to be at. And I see the potential of what we can still do. So. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Yeah. Fast.
Okay. How's See the, you guys. Thank how's you guys the baby? He's doing so well. Good.